How's it going everyone? Welcome back to New Player's Guide for World of Tanks. In this episode we're going to be looking at how to make money in World of Tanks. Now, it can be a bit of a difficult topic to, to do because there are quite a few different ways of doing it. And it depends all on how much credits you actually want to make. If, say, you want to make enough credits to just go and get your tier 10s, then you're going to need about 6 million credits. Now, the straight away, I'm not going to suggest just buying out a premium tank because it's not the option for a lot of people. And if you're a free-to-play player, you, that's not that's not an option at all. So, in so what I would suggest is actually selling your previous tanks. So, in other words, you see everyone that's got all of these tanks in their garage and they've got every tank, you know. And you, you might be on, say, the tier eight and you've kept all of these tanks, okay? Do you really need them? Are you going to play that last tank that you just played? If not, then sell it. Like, I understand like that I've got a few tanks like the KV-2, you know, like that. And you, 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 there's some tanks that you want to keep because they're fun to play. So you understand that, keep them. But for the other tanks that you're not never really gonna use, Unless you have, you know, millions and millions of credits and you've got about 84 different premium tanks. Yeah, then, you know, go and keep them. It doesn't matter, This, but this video is never going to apply to you, is it? However, if you are just a free-to-play player and you're looking to just make some credits and you do have these tanks that are still in your garage, then you might as well just sell them. Next way is actually going to the depot. And right here, you'll see loads and loads of different things that you can actually sell. Now these um, directives you can't sell, um, maybe in the future you'll be able to sell them in the bond shop if Wargaming actually ever even bring that out. But you, you can go here and sell your old equipment, I wouldn't suggest doing this honestly, but you could if you say you got you know, a repair kit or binocular telescopes for free from one of the uh, reward merits, rewards for merits, you can get actually some of these for free. So if you've already got one, you don't really need more than one of one of the camouflage net and binocular telescopes because you can just take these off for free and put them on any tank you want. So yeah, if you've got more than one of these, then you can sell them. But the main thing that you want to sell is modules. Now, if, for example, so as you can see, I've got none in here. But if we go and five type five heavy, let's go and say, get this. This is the derp gun, and then, as you can see, if we go back into the depot and modules, you'll see that I've got a gun here now, and that's the other gun that I just had on the Type 5 Heavy. So you might have a load of these. If you've got a load of tanks that you've been through and you haven't been selling the, um, you know, the original parts, then you can sell all of these and earn quite a bit of money. Now. This does mean that you're going to have to buy them back if you ever do buy the tank back with that gun. So take this and make sure that you understand what you are buying and selling. And also these can be for different tanks. It's not just for one tank. As you can see, compatible with the Type 4 and the Type 5 Heavy. So if I sell this, I would have to then buy it back on the Type 4 Heavy as well. As we can see right here, wherever it's gone. That's the wrong one. There we go. So this one right here is the one that's in my depot. But you can earn quite a bit of money by just going through here. Shells also, as you can see, I have a few shells, like the premium rounds. Right now, look, we can just sell all of these. And I've made quite a bit of money from that. Crew books you can't sell, just ignore them. You can also sell any, any premium consumables that might have been given to you for free. You can complete these missions that will give you random consumables like this. You could do the all-rounder, you get two premium consumables each, one for the fire extinguisher, for repair kits, and first aid kits. So, you know, get a few of them and then you can sell the consumables right there. Now the next thing to do is actually to play a lower tier tank. What I would suggest is actually playing something like a T67, because the T67, where is it gone? There it is. Now this thing, although it's a SEAL Clubber's dream tank, it's actually a really nice tank to play. And if you can, you know, get used to it, you can actually earn quite a bit of money from it. Now, you're never going to earn as much as a premium tank. That's a given. You're never going to do that. It's, it's not going to be... 
better than buying a premium tank and playing it. But if you don't fire gold rounds and you don't use premium consumables, you're going to earn quite a bit more money than, say, if you just played a normal tier 8 tank. You can also play anything between tier 5 and 6 are roughly okay and good credit makers. Also, why not play a scout tank? Because then you don't have to fire as many rounds, and as long as you don't die, you don't have to pay for the repair cost. And you're just getting all the spotting damage for free, so that then you can actually get all the credits, and you've not really spent a lot. So maybe something like the Chaffee, T-37, something like that. Uh, you can also play the, e <laughs> you can play the ELC AMX. You know, this thing's very fun to use. But yeah, so around tier 5 and 6, you can start earning a bit of money as well, if you're not a free-to-play player, if you are a free-to-play player. Now, one thing I will say is never ever exchange gold into credits, and for good reason. Let's say you want to buy a T-3485M. Now, tier 6 tanks, premium tanks, they cost around about 3,700. Uh, as you can see, a 3,750. You can buy it for... Like 350, 3,500, sorry. So let's say you want to buy it for 3,500. You get 1.4 million credits, which seems like a good deal because that's an okay amount of credits for basically doing nothing. Like 3,500 gold is what, about 10, 12 pounds, something like that. And you could just go and get a T3485M right here, and that will earn you quite a bit of money. Like, sure, it's not going to earn you as much as a tier 8 premium, but it's going to earn you a lot more over time. And you earn that 1.4 million over, I don't know how many games, it depends how well you how well you play. But it's a fun tank to play, and it's a lot better than just spending the gold into currency, it's not worth it. Now the next way of getting credits is World of Tanks Premium. Now, this is going to cost you money, but it's, in my opinion, the most worth it if you actually play the game semi-regularly so it doesn't it doesn't really matter too much it's a lot more worth it than buying a premium tank for example you can get 30 days for 2000 and well 2.2 let's just let's just call it that it's on a 50% discount but it's usually 2500 which is 8 pound so for 8 pound you can get 30 days of premium a whole month of premium time and what you get is 50% bonus to credits and experience in every battle. Now, if you have, say, a tier 5 tank as well, that's going to earn you even more money per battle. So you could go around, get your premium time, and get your T67, and go and make... Not, you know, you're not going to make loads of credits, but you're going to make a little bit more than you would normally. And if you actually combine this with, say, T3485M, you're going to earn even more. So it's really worth it to actually have a premium account. And the way it works out, it's about £60 for a year. So you're paying about £5 a month. Now, depending on how, you know, £60 is quite a lot of money. And I wouldn't suggest this to everyone. But if you do play this game for long periods of time in the month, it might be easier for you to buy it for just a year. Now, having said that, if you don't play it every month, then just get, you know, you can get one day for only 250 gold. I'm going to ignore the discounted price because it's not always going to be like that for everyone, in, depending on what time you're watching this. But you can buy it for one day for 250 gold, seven days for 1,250. And that's only about £3, something like that. So for seven days, you know, that's a reasonable amount for a week worth of playing the game. It's actually quite decent cost-wise. I wouldn't suggest it to everyone. It depends on how, how often you play the game, depending on what one you select. Now finally, we're going to talk about the tier 8 premiums, and this is by far the best way of earning credits. In an ideal world, you want a World Tanks Premium account, and maybe two tier 8 premiums. Now, why would I say two? Well, you want to go into your battle, and say you just, you know, you die, you don't have the best game, it happens to everyone. You don't have the best game, you want to go back into the game, but you've got no other tier 8 premium, and you need to make money. So you go into the next game and then you play and you can go and you know continue the game. By the time that you die in that one or you win, you have other tanks out of battle as well. So what tier 8 premiums would I suggest? Progetto, Patriot, Defender, IS3A, Scorpion G, if it ever loads, there we go, Lerva, 
T54 first, first prototype and STR VS1. All of these are great tanks. Oh, and the Lorraine, I almost forgot. Now the STR VS1 is actually a really good tank to play because it has the highest base pen on its normal standard rounds of any tier eight premium at the moment. It has 288 millimeters of penetration and you don't even need gold rounds for it. Now, as you can see, I'm not using any premium consumables apart from the automatic fire extinguisher because if I get set on fire, I don't really want to burn. And yes, you earn more credits, but you also will be using 20,000 credits each battle if you go and choose food. So I wouldn't, I don't like doing that because sure, it earns me plus 10% skills and perks, but at the same time, I'm still losing some credits when I could be earning that extra 20,000 per battle. The Bajetto is really nice, especially for Frontline. This is one of the most played tanks in Frontline because it has the auto reloading system and you always kind of have a shell ready. Lorraine, one of my favorite tanks in the game, has an auto loader, basically like a, it's, it's like a bigger bat chat. It's, it's really nice, but a tier eight. Has really nice pen as well. Patriot is just one of the best tanks tier for tier in the game. Honestly, like it, it's so good. As you can see, I've got two marks of excellence. I've got over 350, well, 347 games played. It's a great tank. And then these two, well, they're Russian and they're amazing. So, I mean, if you don't know about the Defender, I made a video about it uh, literally yesterday. So, yeah. And the IS-3A is basically just an IS-3 with an autoloader. So, <laughs> it's, I, I don't really know what, what what game we're thinking when they made that tank. <laughs> just, yeah, we'll just buff it a little bit. Oh, how are you going to buff it? Oh, we add an autoloader to it. Oh, okay. Nice. And then the Scorpion G has the highest alpha of any tank destroyer in the game, I believe. It has 490 alpha, so... No, it doesn't. The SU-130PM has more alpha, but it doesn't have a fully traversable turret, so I prefer this tank, which is why I didn't buy one. But yeah, so they're the main tanks that I'd recommend, and you'll notice that all of these are not in the tech tree apart from the Lerva and the T-54 first prototype. Well, and the Stritz one, but... You know, the them three tanks are nice. If you're gonna get if you if you have to get one of them, then it depends because it's if you can't get any of these and they're not in the premium shop, then maybe it's between a lover and a STRV. The lover I would probably suggest more people to go with because it is more forgiving. So it it, it has good armor. As long as you're kind of hold down you don't expose this lower plate because it's not well angled at all really and it's just going to go straight through and you can also be set on fire pretty easily also it has this little bit here there you can be shot so it's not the best for side scraping but you can get away with it but the reason why i say the strv is because of the pen but you are going to be sitting at the back of the map so it depends on your play style and how you want to play it so the Lerva I would recommend because these two are the only ones really that are good in the tech tree. The Lerva is quite expensive. I believe it's like 12,000 gold. But down to you ultimately if it's worth it for you. And the STRV, I don't really know how much gold that's worth. But I wouldn't, I wouldn't get the T-54 Mod 1 unless you really wanted to grind your crew experience. And now... That's the other thing when it comes into making the decision on the tank that you want to get. What crew or what lines are you already going down? Now, if you've watched my last, well, my last, yeah, my last video. Now, if you watched my last World of Tanks New Players Guide video, I would, have, I suggest that you went down the IS-7 or the Object 277 route. Now, this means that you're going to have to get a defender if you want to train your crew. Because premium tanks are unlike normal tanks, you can put any crew in it and it will act like it's their tank. So I've got my Object 277 crew in it. I'm not having any penalty for doing this because I can put any crew in it and it will train the crew up like it's their normal tank. In the IS-3A, I've got my IS-7 crew in it. So like normal tank, it's there, it's working fine. And this is where it comes in, you know, what, what line are you already going down? If you're going down the backjack line, you've got the tier 9, Lorraine 40T. 
the that's the only really annoying thing is that you're gonna have to get to tier nine before you can actually you know research them because it's a light tank up until then scorpion g obviously german td line and the patriot american heavy line german heavies russian mediums so if you've got object 430u you're going down that line t54 mod one but at the same time maybe wait until the t44 100 comes in to the market but if you can't wait then yeah you're gonna have to get that and then swedish tds like th this is actually the most like comparable tank to the actual tech tree because it has the siege mode and it's basically the same as the other tier, tier 8 TDs that are in, in the Swedish line. Like the UDES compared to this is pretty similar. Like sure it doesn't have any benefit of when it does go into siege mode apart from better aim time. So it doesn't r reduce the reload time. But the UDES compared to this isn't too dissimilar. And then the same for like you know tier 9 compared to this and tier 10. It's, it looks so similar and it does the same mechanics. Another great way of earning credits is actually through credit boosters. Now at the moment you can go into home front as it still does have a few days remaining. And if you go into the actual descriptions here and then click open on here, you can actually get 10 credit boosters as well as three days of premium. And I believe this was 2,500 gold. Or it might've been 1,500 gold. I can't remember now. It, I explained it in the rant video or whatever I'd done ages ago. And but if you buy both of these, then you get 12 credit boosters and four days of premium. As well as that, you'll get an extra 10 to 50% bonus XP for an hour. Now these will earn you 50% more credits per battle for one hour. Now, I wouldn't recommend this if you're a free to play player because it's gonna cost you money and there's no point. You can get these given out for free at special events like Tank Fest. Sometimes they give out codes and then you'll get some credit boosters. But you go over to here and as you can see, credit boosters, 50% for one hour and you get an extra bonus on top of your premium account, your premium vehicles. So if you say, for example, you have a tier eight premium, you have a World of Tanks premium account, you have 50% credit boosters, right? You can, and these go all the way up to 100% for two hours. So this is like the lowest, well, it's not the lowest because you can get 25% more bonus, but this is kind of a mediocre kind of middle ground in the credit booster section. So if you get, say, 100% more credit boosters, you're running 150% more credits per game if you have one of them on and you have your, um, you know, your premium count added onto that. As well as that, you can earn even more if you choose a tier 8 premium. So, you know, it's a win-win. And then as well, if you're a clan member, you can also get credit boosters given out to the whole clan at a certain point and you've got to access this through your stronghold. And then for, say, two hours, you'll have a credit boost to everyone in your clan. And, you know, you're earning even more. So, I mean, combine all of them and you're making a metric duck ton of credits. Like, it's, it's a lot. But, yeah, if you did enjoy this video, then by all means, leave a like, stuff like that. I'll see you in a bit.